So I made this week um, about three hundred and fifty-three dollars US dollars from my permaculture plans. And uh, today I quickly want to tell you how, how I've spent it and what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, before I do that, I want to tell you a story. Um, you know, there's a, a Damara party happening about four kilometers that way. And then the Afrikaans people are having a festival about 70 kilometers that way. And so we decided to, to flee the towns and we found ourselves camping on our plot. And then this morning I woke up, a very traditional breakfast for, for our people, Omar Rusks. And uh, yeah, this, the, the Rusk has got an interesting story. So, so many, many years ago, before my nation started, there was a couple, of, a group of Dutch people called the Grutrak. <laughs> Sorry, okay, this, this wasn't planned at all. <laughs> and uh, so a, a couple of Dutch people fled the, the Cape Colony to get away from the British. And so this was one of the staple foods, the, the rusk. And so they used this in coffee just the way we did. And so many, many years ago... Many, many years later, in 1939 there was a big depression in South Africa and so the unofficial story about the Omar Rusk is the story that I want to tell you today so there was a church in during the depression that said listen um, you know everybody's going through tough times we have a bit of money but instead of giving it to you we want you to use it for businesses and so this lady Oma Gravenstein or Grandma Gravenstein took some money from the church when she started a small rusk company. Now a rusk is basically very very dry bread that you can't eat like that, it's too hard. So you dip it in coffee and you eat it like that. And so she took the money from the church and she started the company and uh, even up until today the word Oma is synonymous with these rusks. And so there's not really a point to my story, but I think most beautiful stories don't have a point. And let me show you quickly what I do with what I did with that money that I made from my permaculture things. So this is what's been happening since the previous cut of the video. I went shopping, and so I bought these pipe fittings and accessories, and then I'll give my die roll pipe off my great roll. And then I bought some drip irrigation. Now I only needed 50 meters, but pass up, see and those buys pass up. Um, so I could only buy 500 meters. There's only one shop in town that sells it. So I took these guys to cut grass for the for the sheep. And so the idea is, I'm not very happy with my prickly pear setup. So I'm going to dig a side pit around each one, or a dam pit around each one at least. And then I am going to add drip irrigation. And so on that I spent just over $200, so more than half of my budget went to the pipes and the pipe fittings. See, because the guys, because I have to carry water for 50, 60 meters to get here, they don't give them water <clears throat> and so they look like this they're not happy and that doesn't make me happy so um, yeah the, between the um, getting up from the camp getting all the friends of the children up and ready feeding the kids and then uh, one of my guys phoned and saying he's su suffering from Babalas, which is, uh, what's that in English, hangover. She's got a hangover, so she's not coming in today. Uh, we didn't progress much. But this is the idea. So, one of Joel Salatin's things is that you must focus on not holding water. He says that's one of the big homesteading mistakes. So that line is coming from the house. 
gonna add a tap here for this sheep so we don't have to carry water for them a automatic waterer for the sheep on that side and then the line over here will add a drip irrigation system that will go around the crawl all around feed the, the prickly pears on drip irrigation and also we'll maybe then plant some pumpkins or something else on that and then this line over here um, goes then to one of the horse camps because that also takes about two hours of the guys work every day to make that work so um, yeah that's half of the budget gone um, but I think it's worth the while so we've got the the insect setup brings in money and um, so I really want to get some other setup up and running as well that makes sense uh, time wise and that makes sense economically wise to to get it done as well and so we'll be working on this today and tomorrow I'll give you an update okay so Moremi is looking after the children today this is his fire fire grill that just tastes better kind of roast going there so there has to be <laughs> fun it's 32 degrees people are making lunch it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon we all worked through lunch <laughs> and so all of us are quickly making lunch and then we'll continue with the, with the site <laughs> Sunday after camping last night um, we didn't uh, after lunch la yesterday we we didn't do a lot um, it was hot and everybody was tired so after we took lunch yesterday the day winded down and so today we are packing up camp this is our vehicle home and then this morning uh, last night late somebody called me they wanted to buy some more insects so sold just over thirty dollars anyway so these chicks um, this is now my first attempt at the chicken tractor I will add shade and water for them and then hopefully they will then re-green this whole pasture area for me so we will only move them once a week um, and the reason for that is the design is not great yet we have to add this wire to the bottom to try and keep the predators out um, so the design is not predator proof yet we have all different kinds of skunks and things that will eat the chickens if they can just dig in the corner so hopefully this little wire that comes out a bit will stop them anyway so we will move them once a week to a different spot and so shade will come up a little bit later now in the next hour or so and then I see they discovered the food they are happy with that so that is ten dollars just over ten dollars going in there okay so there's the first water coming from Emmanuel all right so that was sort of an unexpected thing to do with um, the insect money but it might be a system that at least in the long run will produce uh, results so the the balance is is tricky you you want um, the idea behind permaculture is to make it permanent so that's long long term thinking but you also have to keep the system going and so you have to make short uh, short term profits as well and so um, thinking short term the insects are short term the prickly pear situation that we are working on is long term the red wigglers are short term money but with long term benefits because the compost we can use in our land the chickens are a medium term because they can produce eggs in a couple of months and then the long term benefits will all of this they will add fertility and biomass to all of this um, land here and so 
I just want to go and unpack the car quickly and then I will show you what we are doing at the prickly pears again. Okay, so this will be the last um, update on this video regarding the prickly pears since it's taking much longer than expected and I want to show you what I spend the rest of the money on. This is basically the little rain basins that we are digging for each prickly pear. Um, and so we open it in such a way so that we can catch all the water. And then while the bushman is making the rain things there, these guys are focusing on the pipe work. So they're putting in a, a pipe there and there will be a ball valve here. The pipe has been buried here already. By the way, if you haven't, um, I work for comments, so please, please leave a comment. Um, I'm at 360 subscribers as we, as we, um, as I'm posting this video. So if you can just post how many subscribers you see, if you don't have anything else to comment about, this is the guy's trenching. And uh, labor isn't included in this project, so just so you know. I haven't included labor um, since I'm stealing the guys from some, of some other projects we're working on, stealing them from the day for the day. So I have to pay the salaries in any case. Um, as I said, we have 17 families working for us, 17 people depending on us. Okay, so from the uh, $350. $2. We've now spent $200 and uh, at the house uh, we've spent the other $150 that I quickly want to show you as well how we've spent that. This little snake quickly. It's not poisonous. You guys found it while digging the prickly pear. Okay, so the last $150 was spent on this. Um, this is a greenhouse top for the entrance to the worm shed and then these buckets and those shelves and uh, these tubs for the insects as you can see some of them are becoming bugs now let me pick one up for you that will pretty soon turn into a beetle now the sad thing about the shelf, uh, we spent, we bought this metal and, I and it was welded and I was so, so very disappointed because it's so skew and I wanted to discipline the person that did the work and I wanted to swear at him and ask him if he knows nothing about welding and then I remembered it was me that built it so lopsided and so wrong and so I have to discipline myself which is never fun uh, but then I also decided to give myself some grace because the last time I really did any proper welding was when I was about 13 and uh, so I decided to give myself some grace okay that's the end of this video that's how I made $350 and how I spent $350 on permaculture and I will update you again as soon as I make a little bit more money or as soon as I do, as soon as I have a bit more progress on my um, permaculture farm. Please leave a comment, that's what I live for, that's what I work for, that's why I make these videos for the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day.